Hey guys, good morning. Uh, welcome to another video. It is Saturday. It is a cold Saturday today. Um, just getting out here from my garage. I'm getting ready for another ride. So, heading out now. It is chilly out here. It is a chilly fall morning. I can't believe it already. It's kind of a shock to my system. Um, you know, having it be so chilly out here because I'm not used to I'm not used to it. It's almost like riding, starting out a ride when it's um, it's been cold and then it gets warm and humid and your body's just not used to it. That's how I'm feeling right now. Um, so anyway, it's about in the 40s, uh, a little chilly, um, windy out there, and uh, it's going to be a headwind going out and then a ta nice tailwind coming back. So I'm all bundled up with my the gilet, uh, arm warmers and leg warmers. So yeah, it's that time of the year now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here and I'll see you guys in the road. Um, there's a significant amount of headwind uh, coming towards going towards New Fairfield here so I was fighting some headwind for a bit there and the roads are pretty busy seems as though this is the second time I've ridden on Saturday and it looks as though uh, the roads are still pretty busy on Saturdays probably because some businesses are open. That's probably why the roads are busy. And I had this, I ran into this same thing last weekend when I did the ride. So anyway, um, so I'm here uh, in Squan's Pond uh, where Jason and I normally uh, would stop and fuel and enjoy people uh, fishing, canoeing, uh, mostly fishing actually. I think people are starting to are taking advantage of the um, last bit of sun before it starts to get cold and the water freezes and they can't fish anymore. So it looks pretty peaceful right now except the you can definitely see the current moving in the opposite direction of where I'm headed. Looks like there's some group pavement here. Maybe they're going to uh I'll be doing some social media either on 
Strava or YouTube, which is the only two social media platforms that I'm in. Um, but some women have messaged me and asked me um, how I tackle or how I handle fear when I'm riding, especially I'm riding by myself. And um, I do have fear and I, I, I do get scared um, before my rides. Um, I remember a couple of months ago after Jason had his crash and I had to ride by myself, I almost had to relearn how to be a lone rider. And um, sometimes I would toss and turn the night before outside of the routes I'm taking, making sure that I know how to react quickly um, in, during in, in intersections, especially here when it does get pretty busy along the intersections in Danbury. So how I handle that is I really just put on my helmet, my shoes, my shorts, get dressed for the ride and start riding. And I think the more you ride, the more you feel comfortable on the roads. And um, I definitely think that you definitely need to get used to the roads. You don't have to go super fast and I don't go fast. Um, I'm not a fast rider anyway, um, but that's primarily because um, I have to be extra cautious uh, of the roads and making sure that there aren't any, um, you know, any traffic or cars that I don't hear or see. Um, I used to have a, um, a mirror on my handlebars that would help me um, determine if there's a car behind me and that was pretty helpful. I stopped, I've since stopped using it because I wanted to teach myself to be more aware of the roads. And if you're new, that doesn't mean you shouldn't use that mirror, but you should definitely um, practice being more aware of the roads, hearing, listening for cars behind you. Most cars you can hear, um, but I also often look uh, behind me to make sure that there isn't a car uh, or cars. So um, just get out there and practice riding. Um, you don't have to go necessarily, I mean, you can do around your neighborhood. Um, and then if you start feeling adventurous, you can go out to, um, you know, longer rides on, on roads. <laughs> Something else that other people, uh, especially my parents, have asked me is, are you afraid of other things, other factors like people um, <laughs> being kidnapped? And those are a lot of scary things that you hear in the news um, about things that happen, unfortunate things that happen to people. And for the most part, I have not encountered anyone that looks suspicious at all that would could potentially kidnap me in any way. So my parents are... <sighs> rightfully so the biggest critic of me uh, doing these long rides um, when i did my 100 mile ride they were they were scared um, they were afraid of me doing these long rides or they still are they worry it's not so much fear but more so worry um, and most many times i show them these videos and show them that these are the roads that i'm riding in and yes they are busy but uh, most cars are pretty good of course I say that now but there was a, a car um, I was riding uphill and unfortunately I didn't I didn't get it in the recording but um, yeah he was making a left turn and I was going straight and so I had the right of way and he cut me and um, you know, abruptly made a left turn and knowingly that he might collide into me and it was a young kid and teenager and these teenagers are you know, risk takers, so new drivers. And I was going slow enough to react fairly quickly to his knee-jerk reaction or knee-jerk move, but um, yeah, that was, uh, that 
could be, happen out in the road. But for the most part, most cars are pretty uh, understanding of you know what I what I'm doing out here. I guess I'm a sucker for these climbs um, and also I'm a sucker for farm open farmland and ponds I don't know I like to stop at any type of body of water because it's so peaceful and today is just a beautiful day uh, it is chilly um, I don't know if I mentioned this but it's about if, let me see what the temperature is okay it's saying my Wahoo saying 73 degrees but every time I stop to eat uh, and then I get going again, it gets cold. So that's why I'm all bundled up because um, I'm like I'm, I'm a heavy sweater. And so that uh, moisture from the sweat is keeping me nice and cool. And 70 degrees is pretty cold when you go downhill. But Quaker Hill was a tough climb. Uh, that's my first time riding through that road and it was a it was a pretty nice road I I like that it's quiet like the one here this is actually Chapel Hill now which connects to Quaker Hill so I had to make a left turn to get here um, but really quiet roads and uh, some good climbing and nice and wide and uh, I really yeah, I'm a sucker for these things but so far, I, I'm purposely stopped right where the sun is hitting me because it's to keep me warm because now that I have done the climbing, of course, as you know, there's going to be a downhill and things that I brought for food today. Um, I made these vegan rice cakes. They are from, um, I got the idea from GCN. Um, they have a book, you know, one of the nutritionists from EF Pro Cycling. It's the vegan rice cakes. Uh, so I made that and that's pretty good. I um, really like it easy to go down and um, made these um, sort of cubes, cube size ones. And um, that's, I think, supposed to be about, that's about 200 or so calories. And then I add another hundred of gels to go along with it. So I'm about 30 miles in and I have 20 miles left to go. So that should be good. A um, few more, more climbing. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take another gel and head out. Thank you so much for watching today's video. 
Um, these are the stats for the ride. I ended up doing 50 and a half miles with 4,300 feet of climbing. Uh, my average speed was 13.3 miles per hour and it took me about three hours and 47 minutes to complete. Um, I hope that you learned a little bit about some things like con conquering your fears um, and I hope that you can get out there and do the same with your ride. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy the ride. Bye-bye.